We heard from Andrew, uh, the overall Mifid story. How will Mifid, though, impact brokers, asset managers, and their end clients? Well, Peter Randall is a director from Chiex Europe. Hi, Peter. Hey. Welcome back. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, so so we, we heard what Andrew just had to say. What, uh, what's, the, what's the overall impact of Mifid from, from your end? I think the, the most important thing is that, there's, uh, as Andrew says, the concentration rules go, which allows competition in Europe, uh, Louisa. The second thing is that right at the heart of this is the rules about best execution. Best execution, which in the past was maybe nice to have, now it's mandatory. And uh, uh, asset managers and their clients and brokers, investment banks, are now looking for places to get best execution or better execution that they can get in previous exchanges. And that's uh, one of the, the biggest changes, I think, going to be very important. Do you think it's, yeah, well, you just answered that. I was going to say, do you think it's, it's going to make a real difference? And, it's going to make a huge difference. It. Yes, I think it's going to make a huge difference. Uh, the opportunity to introduce competition into the uh, European markets, I think, is going to bring down prices. I think is going to bring in a lot of new liquidity. Uh, people who weren't previously being able to get their business done in Europe uh, are now being able to, as a result of uh, uh, the changes that Mifid introduces, are going to be able to put their flow into the European markets. And that, I think, is going to be good for all. Does this also mean that I can assume that we're going to see a lot more algorithmic trading, for example? Are we going to see uh, many more mathematical models being followed simply because the ins and outs of you know, what, what's the best trade? You, you need to have these mathematical models. Yes, I think, I think that's absolutely the case, that the, uh, the math-based uh, uh, liquidity providers are going to become more important. Uh, and I think that uh, as markets ebb and flow, as... Uh, as various uh, uh, participants are winners and losers. Uh, certainly at the moment, I believe that the, uh, the so-called algo traders, the statistical arbitragers, uh, if you like, as well, uh, are on the up. And some of the more traditional uh, smile and dial telephone traders are, are on the down. Um, but that's, uh, that's markets. So that's something to be, uh, to be uh, borne in mind, I think, when, when looking at, uh, at Mifid. Does this also automatically mean that there's going to be a lot more stuff that has to be published from, you know, from various brokerages and, and larger financial institutions? Yeah, I, I think one thing that's really, really important, and it's something I guess that uh, as, a, as an old broker I learned many, many years ago, uh, that uh, the most important thing you can do in financial services is, is disclosure. If you're prepared to tell people what you're doing and make it very clear what you're doing and the prices that you did it at and all the rest of it, then that in a way uh, informs the whole market of the opportunities out there. Um, I think the, the idea in the past of having sort of little private deals that were done off, uh, off the exchange in smoke-filled rooms, not a particularly good idea for providing investor protection and led uh, I think a number of people to sort of feel that the markets weren't particularly transparent. Mm. MIFID puts transparency, it puts disclosure, it puts best execution, and it puts critically competition right at the heart of it. It's a really exciting time. I think Europe's uh, going to be on a, an exciting and accelerating growth path uh, in uh, uh, in securities trading for the next uh, uh, little while. Mm. Uh, last question, I just want to hear, do, is it your impression that clients understand this? I mean, one thing is that the institutions understanding it because they have to as of today. Yes. The other thing is you know, whether or not the, other, the end user understands it. Oh, I think end users understand that, uh, you know, if they can go to a different platform and get a better price, uh, I mean, I think end users are, are actually very sophisticated. I mean, I think most people are uh, pretty good with understanding their mobile phone tariffs. I think most people are pretty good at understanding uh, you know, the supermarket tariffs, uh, I don't think that there's any reason to assume that uh, they won't get pretty good at understanding the, uh, the tariffs that the various exchanges uh, charge and uh, migrating their business, uh, I believe, to places that offer lower mm. charges and uh, lower uh, fees. I mean, just uh, really very quickly, I mean, and the, the, the Chiax platform, which I happen to uh, be the CEO of, this morning our run rate has doubled. So we used to be doing about, uh, uh, about a million euros a minute. We're now doing about two million euros a minute. Now, that's a very exciting development. That, I think, is driven by competition. Interesting. Thank, Thank you. you so much. I'd agree with you that uh, never underestimate the, uh, the end user. So. Absolutely. Peter Randall, Director of uh, Chiax Europe.